Hello, I'm Kristen Chu with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco. Along with the League and SFGov TV, I'm here to discuss Proposition F, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 3rd. In an effort to prevent converting residential units to tourist use, San Francisco limits short-term rentals of residential units. A short-term rental lasts less than 30 days. These limits set forth in San Francisco's short-term rental law require that only permanent residents may offer a residential unit for short-term rental, and a permanent resident may not rent a residential unit on a short-term basis for more than 90 days per year if the resident does not live there during the rental period. Proposition F would limit short-term rentals of a unit to 75 days per year, regardless of whether the rental is hosted or unhosted. After including a unit on its short-term rental registry, the city will be required to post a notice on the building stating that a unit has been approved for use as a short-term rental. A yes vote means you want to limit short-term rentals of a unit to 75 days per year, regardless of whether the rental is hosted or unhosted, require owners to provide proof that they authorize the unit as a short-term rental, require residents who offer short-term rentals to submit quarterly reports on the number of days they live in the unit and the number of days the unit is rented, prohibit short-term rentals of in-law units, allow interested parties to sue hosting platforms, and make it a misdemeanor for a hosting platform to unlawfully list a unit as a short-term rental. A no vote means you do not want to make these changes to city law. I'm here with Roger Ritter, president of the West of Twin Peaks Central Council and a proponent of Proposition F. We're also joined by Alfredo Fletes, spokesperson for No on F and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. We'll start with some opening remarks. Roger? City Hall continues to promote the proliferation of short-term rentals, turning our residential neighborhoods into commercial corridors in direct and open defiance of our zoning laws. Proposition F is a modest measure offering safeguards, such as limiting short-term rentals to 75 nights per year, hosted and unhosted. That's two and a half months, more than enough for any occasional use. Allowing hosting platforms to list only housing units registered with the city. Providing notice to neighbors and neighborhood associations when a unit is registered. Ensuring legal rights for neighbors and neighborhood associations to protect their property if the quiet enjoyment and privacy of their homes are violated. And finally, prohibiting short-term rentals of in-law units intended for family and friends, not tourists. Protect our residential neighborhoods. Please vote yes on Prop F. Thank you, Roger. Alfredo? Well, thanks for having us on the show, um, Kristen. First, I want to start off by reminding viewers that short-term rentals are already regulated in San Francisco. In February, the city enacted some of the strictest rules in the country that will help oversee these regulations of short-term rentals. Second, in July, the city created the Office of Short-Term Rental Enforcement and, and Administration. In fact, the city collects over a million dollars in hotel taxes from these rentals every single month, which funds our parks, it funds our libraries, it funds Muni. But Prop F takes these regulations to a new extreme. It encourages neighbors to file lawsuits against each other, even when the city finds that there is no issue, and even if a person is not offering a short-term rental. It bans the short-term rental of every single in-law unit in San Francisco forever. And it requires short-term rental hosts to file quarterly reports documenting where they have slept every single night of the year. It's for these reasons that Prop F is opposed by former mayor and current Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom, by Mayor Ed Lee, by the Democratic Party of San Francisco, and many, many more. And we urge your viewers to also oppose Prop F. Thank you. Let's get into the questions. Alfredo, how would, you, how would the passage of Prop F affect would-be hosts and would-be renters? Yeah, that's, that's an excellent question. Well, um, you know, there's this, there's this uh, misunderstanding out there that Prop F is only going to impact hosts, but everyone is at risk under Prop F because anyone can be sued under Prop F. What Prop F does is yank the enforcement responsibility away from the city of San Francisco, and it hands it over to nosy neighbors who will be able to file lawsuits over perceived violations of the law and make money off of it. All you have to do is pick up the phone, file a complaint over the phone, with no evidence and anonymously. You wait 90 days and then you'll be able to proceed 
with the lawsuit to collect special monetary damages and even attorney fees. Again, regardless of the city's findings on that complaint and regardless if you offer a short-term rental or not. Now, what this is going to allow is for that neighbor down the street from you who complains about everything, it's gonna allow them to take ordinary neighborhood disagreements and escalate them into expensive lawsuits. And if you're on the receiving end of these lawsuits, you have two options. You're either gonna to have to lawyer up for a lot of money or you're gonna to have to settle out of court for a lot of money. This isn't what San Francisco needs right now. Roger? The noisy neighbor is a fiction. It's a fantasy created by the opponents of Prop F to scare people. I'm a retired attorney. I know for a fact you can't file a lawsuit over the phone. You can't file a lawsuit by picking up the phone. You may be able to make an administrative complaint, but to file a lawsuit requires paying a filing fee and going to the clerk's office and filing suit. The reason why this provision is in Prop F is because, frankly, after trying for months to get City Hall to listen to our concerns, after the original legislation was passed in October, and City Hall would not listen, we decided the only way to protect neighbors, neighborhood organizations, including the 20 that I represent, West of Twin Peaks, and ordinary people who don't want their neighborhoods turned into hotel zones, is to allow for private right of action. As a practical matter, anyone can sue anybody else for anything. That's been the law in California since 1850. So once again, the nosy neighbor is a fiction, it's a fantasy. It's an attempt to tell people something that really isn't true. Roger, is this a, just an Airbnb law, or does it have broader effects? It has broader effects. Airbnb is the main proponent of this type of short-term rental. But there are other types of rental agencies as well. And again, we're not against rental agencies. We're not against short-term rentals. Prop F says you can rent up to 75 nights a year. That's two and a half months. That's a long time. I think that certainly qualifies for any reasonable definition of occasional use. But under the existing law, you can rent 24-7, 365 days a year. 90 days unhosted, 265 days hosted. And getting back to what Alfredo said about nosy neighbors, how do you know if your neighbor is there or not, if it's hosted or unhosted? The only way to enforce the current law is to get the nosy neighbor to basically spy on the neighbor and find out if you're actually there. That's one of the main problems with the existing law. We're not saying people shouldn't be able to do occasional use. We are saying that people shouldn't be able to turn quiet residential streets into hotel neighborhoods. Are there broader implications for this law in your opinion? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I want to address the issue that uh, Roger brought up around this, this cap, right? It's, com it's a completely arbitrary cap and it's going to severely limit San Franciscans' ability to share the home in which they live, making it much harder for them to afford to stay in San Francisco. Now, different people have different reasons for why they engage and why they offer a short-term rental. In fact, there's this, there's, this proposed, there's this idea out there that's being pushed that if someone wants to rent for more than 75 days, they can just get a bed and breakfast permit. Well, you know that the city of San Francisco has not issued a conditional use permit for a bed, for a bed and breakfast in over two and a half years. And in order to get a, a conditional use permit, it's, it's very complex. You have to submit yourself to expect in, inspections um, by the health department um, and all sorts of other red tape. Just, it just all this underscores the complexity that is involved with getting this, this sort of permit. Now, these are people who are just sharing a spare bedroom in their home. These are people like Tracy, a resident of Russian Hill, single mother, full-time job, who uses the extra income from, from sharing a spare bedroom to pay for childcare costs for her daughter. We shouldn't be making it much harder and much more difficult for these people to afford to stay in San Francisco in a time when we're seeing housing costs higher than, the, than they've ever been. Great, it's time to move on to our closing statements. We'll start with Alfredo. Great, well, um, thank you again for, for this opportunity to speak. Again, I think it's really important to note that Prop F does absolutely nothing at addressing the current affordability and housing crisis that we're in the middle of at the moment. I mean, neighbors suing neighbors, it's, it's nothing more but another NIMBY approach that is going to divide our communities. It's, again, it's gonna allow simple, basic neighborhood conflicts to escalate into expensive courtroom battles by providing a economic incentive for a neighbor to sue the person next door. This law was designed to exclude San Franciscans 
who own in-law units, and it was designed to give the government the ability to track where someone sleeps at night. I mean, is that how we really want to enforce simple land use laws? I mean, there's no question that this proposition is going to divide San Francisco. It's going to drive families out of San Francisco. I mean, look, we want a San Francisco where everyone is welcome, and, and that's what we're trying to build here with, with, um, uh, with why we're opposing Prop F, um, and I urge everyone who's watching this to also, appro uh, to also oppose Prop F. <laughs> Roger. Well, first of all, the use of the term home share is a total misnomer. These people are not sharing anything. They're selling a product, in this case, space. If they want to turn their homes into B&Bs, then they should go through the legal process. What Alfredo refers to cavalierly as red tape is protection of the public health and safety. The people who moved into western residential neighborhoods, 20 of which I represent at the West of Twin Peaks Council, want to keep those neighborhoods as residential neighborhoods. They don't want to turn them into hotel zones. They don't want to turn them into commercial corridors. The current legislation says that this use is residential use, not commercial use, which means neighborhood associations that have prohibitions against this type of commercial use can't even enforce those prohibitions. Essentially, this is an attempt to rezone the entire city and to make all of San Francisco a commercial zone. If the, if the opponents of Prop F want to do that, they should simply say, let's rezone the city, and then we'll talk about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for your comments and your time. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 3rd. Thanks for watching.